Hello quilters, welcome back. I'm so glad to have you with me as we make block 14, which is almost the last block for our sampler quilt. And so block 14 is by Deborah C. Volbach, Vol, yeah, Volbracht, and it's called Feng Shui. And this is the block. You can see that it's made of tiny strips, one, two, three, four strips in each cluster, and they swing around a middle five and a half inch square. So let's get started with the cutting directions and we will put this little block together. It's shown here in black and gray and shades of gray. Of course, with my African fabrics, it's going to be a little more colorful and some of these fabrics will be in the same places as you see the black and the gray. Now, one of the easiest ways to cut the pieces for this block is to cut several strips from the fabrics you plan to use that are one and one, one and three fourth inches wide. If you look at the cutting directions carefully, you'll notice that each measurement is, I mean, each piece that has to be cut, except the square, is one and three fourth inches wide. So when I cut mine, I cut several strips of fabric and they were all one and a half, one and a three fourth inches wide. And then I cut the length of the rectangles that I needed. Some of the rectangles are as long as 11 and a fourth. Some are nine and a fourth. Some are seven inches. Some six and a fourth inches. Four and three fourths inches. But all of them can come from your one and three fourth inch strips. So keep that in mind to help you cut more efficiently and a lot more quickly. I'm going to take the cutting directions down and we're going to look at the pieces that I've cut and we will begin to put the block together. Here on the table you can see the rectangles that I have cut for this block. Notice all of my rectangles are one and three fourth inches wide and the only thing that varies are the lengths of the various rectangles that are cut. And when you get ready to cut yours, it will be the same way. You can choose to use blacks and grays, or you could choose to use different uh, tones of one color or a variety of colors, however it suits you to express yourself through this block. And of course, in my case, I'm using my African fabrics, but you know how I am by now. You know that I always put a neutral with those fabrics so that the neutral can tone things down a little bit. And so we've got three of the African fabrics it, that will be in the strip clusters. And this will be the center square, the five and a half inch square. Now, as we look at our construction diagram and information, notice that the first thing we have to do is sew strip sets together. We have a strip set at the top that is called section one, and it builds from the bottom up. We've got a fabric A, B, C, D, and E, and look at the order in which they are arranged. That's the section one. Then we are supposed to make two of those, and we will, and now look at section two. The colors also build A, B, C, D, and E, but they get their alphabets from the length of the rectangle, not the shade or the color of the strip. So notice how the color placement changes from section one to section two. Look where the black is located. See where the light gray is located in the two different sections. You can also see where the medium gray is located in the two different sections. And this one is a little harder to see, but right here is a dark gray. It's not a black. This is black. This is black. That's a dark gray. And it's a little hard to see because I have this in black and white. 
but we are going to make two of section one by sewing the strips together that you see in section one and two of section two by sewing those strips together. And each time I sew the strips together, I am going to press the seam allowance open. There are a lot of seam allowances in this and they're created by sewing narrow strips together. So to take some of the bulk out of it, out of the uh, sections, I'm going to press the seam allowances open. So let's get started with section one. Here you can see section one laying on the table ready for it to be sewn. And if you notice that I have done on the table what you see on this sheet. The longest strip is at the bottom. That's A, B, C, D, and E. And I have, oh, I have an extra one in there. Take that off. And so we've got our strips laid out. Now we're ready to sew. Here are the two section A, uh, section one units that uh, we were supposed to create. And so they're all sewn together. And I want you to see that the seams have been pressed open. And notice how the fabrics are staggered. They're staggered that way because ultimately you're going to trim this. And the staggering prevents your having to waste a lot of fabric. So that when we trim, you can tell we'll trim closest to this one at the top because it's the shortest. And we don't wanna waste all of the fabric that would extend out to the other side. So when you sew yours, you're going to stagger them too. And you will see exactly how that staggering is done on the direction sheet. So now that I have the two uh, of the section ones, I now have to create two of the section twos. And once they are sewn and pressed, I will show those to you. Here are the two section two units. And now we are going to sew the four units, section one, section one. We are going to sew these four units around the center square. This is, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> this is what we're going to do. And in order to sew these four units around that center square, we start with one unit and we attach it to the square for about an inch and a half to two inches. And then we stop. We're going to finish that at the end. The next thing we're going to do is attach this unit along that straight edge created by the first unit and the center square. Press our seam allowance open. Now we've got a third side and we can attach the third unit to the third side that has been created. It's nice and straight and ready for us to attach that third unit. Press the seam allowance open. Here we've got the fourth unit and we stitch it right along that edge. Press the seam allowance open. And now that that fourth one has been attached, we can go back and attach, finish attaching the first unit. And so at each of those stages, I'm going to stitch and stop and show you exactly what that looks like with the fabric. Here is the first unit attached to the center, star, center square. You can see that I only did a seam about an inch and a half long. The rest of this I'm going to attach later after I have attached the fourth unit. So this is ready for me to press and I'm going to press just that little bit of the seam allowance open. Don't want to press close to where I stopped, but I do want to press this part open and then we will be ready to attach the second unit. The seam allowance has been pressed open you can see the two units that are attached to the center square. And now you can see that I have this side over here 
there's a nice straight line that I can use to attach the third unit to the center square, which I'm going to do now. I'll pin it, show it to you. It's pinned on, the third unit is pinned on, and now it's time for me to stitch it. And I guess I need to say something about pressing these seams open. That's really a personal choice. I decided that I would press all of my seam allowances open since I started by pressing these open. You may decide that you want to press all of yours to the side, which will be fine. This was just a choice that I made. Nowhere in the pattern does it say you have to press your seam allowances open. One thing that it does tell us to do though, and I'll show that to you, is when you get ready to attach them, you put a number, uh, let's see, that starts up here. So you put a section one and a section one, then a section two and a section two. I hope you can see that because that's essentially how you get that swirling effect in the, um, in the block when you have completed sewing it. So once again, section one, section one, section two, section two, and you can see that those look alike. Okay, so I have section one, section one on mine already, and now I'm sewing the first of the section two. I'll get that stitched and show it to you. Section three has been sewn on, here it is. So I thought it might be easier for you to see it if I had it lying down on the table. So once again, section one, that's the one where the seam is incomplete. And we can't finish that seam until we have sewn section four on. Section one, section one, section two, these are the same sections. Section three, this is a section two in the third spot. I know all of that sounds confusing. And then I'm going to put the second one like this, section four, over here to complete the block. And then we will be ready to trim the block. Here is section four pinned on. And I do want to um, mention that when you sew each of these sections onto the block, onto the square and going around the square, start sewing from the side where the square is located and sew to the outside. Do that for each of the times that you sew a section on, start in the middle, start at the edge of the square and sew to the outside. It's important to do that. Remember, you're going to trim the outside in a little bit. So it's more important to make sure this edge lines up. Sew from the inside to the outside. Okay, I need to take this to the sewing machine and sew section four onto our block. Section four has been sewn onto our block. Section one, section two, section three, section four. Now we need to complete the seam that we started when we sewed section one on. And now you can understand why that had to be a partial seam. You had to wait until you got this last section on in order to complete the seam. So I need to pin this and then take it to the sewing machine and sew it. And when I pressed that seam open, I tried not to press too far because I knew I had to come back and put these two together. And once you have sewn that last section four on and attached it to section one, you have completed putting the block together. And the last thing that's left to be done is to trim the block. And I will demonstrate the trimming uh, once I have finished sewing sections one and four together, completing the first seam that we created. 
And so there it is, all pinned, and I'll take it to the sewing machine and stitch it. Section four has been attached to the block. The seam that I started for the first um, section when I sewed that on has been completed. And now we've got the whole block. You can see that it is um, just kind of rough edges. Uh, nothing really goes together. You can also see that it's larger than 12 and a half inches and all of the blocks we're making are 12 and a half inches to fit together in one quilt. So according to our directions down here, we need to use a 12 and a half inch ruler. And we're going to lay that ruler on top of the block on a diagonal and trim those edges off of the block that you see extending beyond the ruler. Once again, we're going to use a 12 and a half inch ruler to trim all of those jagged edges off of the block so that we get a 12 and a half inch block to go into our quilt. So I'm going to turn the block like this a little bit because I need it on point. And the ruler fits, <clears throat> excuse me, the ruler fits on the block very, very easily once you turn the block on point. Notice that I have a point here. I have one, you can't see that one too well, it's off camera. One down here, one over here. And I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and trim along the edge of the ruler according to the directions on our guide sheet. And my blade is bouncing over the seams a little bit. Oh, they're coming off. Okay. So here we go to the next side. And I have to get around to the third side. Not so easy for a right-handed um, person. And I do have a little spinning cutting board, but it's too small to fit this. So I have to do it the way you see me doing it now. And I don't really want to move that block. So I cut a little bit and then cut a little bit and then cut a little bit. Start right there and cut a little bit. And then a little bit more. Check it. Yeah, I'm getting it. This is where you want the person you know that's left-handed to come into your quilting studio and help you trim if you don't have a turntable big enough to spin this. And mine is little and it's tried it before, it just wouldn't work. So I had to cut it in kind of an awkward way. And it's coming. Don't know what's going on with my blade. I put a new blade in. Okay, now here's the big reveal. And there is our Feng Shui block. Kind of different from this one because this one is blacks and grays. And of course, mine has a little bit more drama because of the African fabrics that I used. I love this block. I love the way that red is cutting through the block. Uh, and then the beige is in there to just kind of tone things down a little bit. But the block itself is absolutely gorgeous. And as always, I have made a second one. And I will show you that one right now. Get this out of the way. Get that out of the way. And let's look at the second block that I made 
Feng Shui. And here it is. And it has the blue in it. The red and the blue. But both of them are kind of dramatic. <laughs> and I think they're gorgeous. This one has the dark green circle. This one I cut out of the red. I fussy cut that out of the red for the middle um, square. But both of them will do very well in the quilt that I'm making. And I'm you know, excited to get that quilt started and get it done. And then I want to show that to you. So we have one more block. This is block 14. One more block, block 15, will come out in a couple of days and you will be ready to put your quilt together if you've been sewing along with me. So right now I need to show you the cutting directions for this block um, so that you can get started with yours. So glad that you could join me. Happy sewing!